Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All coming to you from uh, South Georgia where we are visiting our son for his birthday for the weekend and I'm in the, uh, I guess the teal room or something like that anyway. <laughs> it's a different background for me with a, with a purple lamp no less. Anyway, I wanted to talk today a little bit about the, the, the problem that people are having with full self-driving. Uh, for those of us who are, con I think Elon Musk says, congen congenitally optimistic. Wow, I can't pronounce the word congenitally. Anyway, the idea that that uh, those of us who think that the future is coming often think the future is coming faster. I remember as a child, for example, that I just assumed that we would be on Mars by the mid-1980s or something like that, right? It just seemed inevitable because Apollo had happened so quickly when I was growing up as a little baby that it seemed like Mars was the next logical step. It would just continue on at that pace and things would go on. It did not work out that way, of course, and, and obviously things, things change. But there have been so many advances in artificial intelligence in the past couple of years, you know, starting with images. We, we saw especially like Dolly, Dolly 2, things like that. Over the past 18 to 24 months, we've just seen an explosion in generative AI art from something that didn't work hardly at all to something that is really pretty fantastic. And then most, most recently, we've seen the, the advance of large language models, in particular, uh, ChatGPT. I did a video on that, by the way. You should definitely check that out. It's, it's Microsoft versus Google and uh, OpenAI versus Google's BARD program. Anyway, the, the idea that these large language models are going to fundamentally change the nature of being, the nature of the way that we search and interact with the internet and everything, it's a pretty amazing thing to think about. So why has Tesla's full self-driving taken such a back seat to this and been so challenging for it to come to full fruition and for us to get to full level three slash level four slash level five autonomy where we don't really have to pay attention in our vehicles anymore, where we can just you know, get in the car, say where we want to go, and then go to sleep or do whatever we want to and wake up and, and we're already at that destination. And I think the reason why and what I keep having to remind myself is that this is a whole different standard. Artificial intelligence, when you can do it and it can make mistakes and that's okay, is a whole different ball game than when it can make mistakes and you're not okay, basically. I mean, I guess that's basically it. We're looking at the difference between AI when it generates art or generates language or generates a prediction or something, and it makes a mistake, and we're like, oh, isn't that adorable? It made a mistake. It wasn't that, you know, it, it didn't do it right, and that's okay. If you make a mistake when you're driving, you, you could go off the road, you could hit another car, you could accelerate when you're supposed to be decelerating or decelerate when you're supposed to be accelerating. There's lots and lots of things you can do. The, the bar is so high versus what needs to happen that AI just kind of has to be almost perfect. It has to be in the 99.99999% category. And that's just not something that happens with these other forms of artificial intelligence. You can make mistakes. Chat GPT makes mistakes all the time, right? You ask it things, it will answer you, and then you'll go check it, and you'll be like, nope, that's factually really incorrect. That's not, not true at all. And obviously, it will improve over time, but we are also completely forgiving of the fact that it isn't perfect at this point, and that's okay. We can't be forgiving of transportation that could kill us or injure us or things like that if it doesn't work well. And before I continue on, I'm just going to take a real quick drink. Uh, you know, traveling, even though you're traveling, you can always have your AG1 from Athletic Greens with you. And I am going to have mm, a little of that right now. Man, it's really delicious. And it's fantastic because if you click the link in the description, you get five free travel packets. So you never have to be without your Athletic Greens AG1, which is where I am right now, I'm traveling, I get to be with, don't have to be without them. Of course, it has 75 vitamins, minerals, prebiotics, probiotics, you name it. It's got a ton of stuff. It, it supports your, you know, your gut health, your immunity, makes you feel better. I feel fantastic having used it for a while now. So I can't speak highly enough about it. I think it's a fantastic product. And you get a 90-day money-back guarantee, so what do you got to lose? So anyway, so do yourself a favor. 
get some. You get a year's supply of vitamins D3 and K2 and five travel packs so you don't have to be without your Athletic Greens AG1. So you should definitely get it. Just click the link in the description and tell them the doctor sent you. Anyway, I think that the problem that people are having is that they keep being promised, and Elon Musk is partially to blame for this because, again, he is congenitally optimistic, is that he has promised that we would have robo-taxis from like 2019, you know, so four years ago at this point. He was like, yeah, 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 they'll be on the road by the end of the year, by the end of the year, by the end of the year. I've made mistakes. I've predicted it would happen far too early myself. So there's been, you know, every people keep over-predicting, over-promising, and under-delivering, and that tends to give people the sense that it's not really improving. Things are improving radically. They, when they do get to this bar, it's going to just be there, right? The thing is they keep approaching the bar of good enough, good enough, good enough slowly, and yet it's not perfect yet, it's not there yet, but the car under most circumstances drives itself most places, and that's way better than it was a couple of years ago. Yes, it's an immensely difficult problem, but I think people aren't taking enough account of how good Tesla's AI team is, right? They talk about OpenAI and the rock stars that are there and, you know, the people that are working for them. They talk about Google and the rock stars that are there. They talk about, you know, Amazon. They talk about Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of very, very bright, intelligent people working in this space. Sorry, my dog is attacking the, the computer. So anyway, they talk about this in this space where people are making this amazing progress. And I think what's happened is that between the fact that you've had a little bit of over-promising and under-delivering and the fact that, again, you can't you can't allow this technology to be 100% in control until the moment where it is very close to 100% safe has masked the fact, has made people think that Tesla is not making the kind of progress that they are and that this isn't going to happen soon. Now, Again, being very, very optimistic, I had said the end of 2022, it could very likely be the end of 2023 or sometime in 2024 or something like that. But when it happens, it's going to happen. Remember, this is Tesla. So when it happens in the United States and Canada, at the very least, where it's being tested right now, when it happens, when they turn the switch on, it's not going to turn on in one city for a very limited use case in another city and things like that. It will turn on for everywhere that it is legally allowed to be. Now, my prediction, and I just did a video about that, so you should check this out as well, is that we will see short haul air travel be disrupted by this because I think one of the first places, the most obvious places where it can be turned on is on the, the interstate or freeway high sis, highway system so that where people are driving on limited access roads, right, where you have to have those exits and entrances that come on. People are all kind of driving the same way. There's no, you know, sharp turns, things like that. There's no, um, there's no traffic lights. There's nothing along those lines. It seems like that is a very good potential case. The one downside, of course, is that you're traveling very, very quickly. But this is the the sort of simplified case where the car should be able to drive itself, even using the five-year-old hardware stack, hardware software stack that is currently being used on the highway until we see version 11.3, which should roll out very, very soon, I hope. But even until that point, we're looking at software, even though it's quite old, that works exceptionally well on these road systems already. And it's like almost there. <laughs> it's almost good enough where you don't really have to pay attention to it under, again, a lot of circumstances. If it's raining, if it's foggy, if it's if it's snowing, things like that, then yes, it will ask you. But even if it just works when it's nice weather, relatively nice weather, and even if it just works on the highways for you not having to pay attention, that is still a lot of very, very valuable time that you could make up. Just getting down to South Georgia, it took us over three hours. I think it was about three hours and 20 minutes or something like that to get down here yesterday, three hours, 20 minutes back home again. How nice would it be if I actually had all of that time and did not have to be responsible for driving for that? That would be amazing. So even if it's only on the free ways on the highways, limited access roads where it's usable, it is going to be incredibly disruptive when it happens. And that could happen relatively quickly because, again, Tesla has the evidence, the data to back this up. So again, they're rolling out version 11, which is a new software stack that's going to be working on freeways. So it will probably take them six months to a year, assuming it's working very, very well for them to convince any regulators that it's, say, like 10 times safer than a normal human being on a freeway system. And if and when that happens, however, the, 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 the interstate system, any state that is amenable to this could have it turned on 
all together, which means that you could drive very, very long distances without having to be responsible for driving in driving your vehicle. So this could be very disruptive. So again, we've got an incredible team working at, AI, at Tesla on AI, on machine learning. We've got an amazing group of people who are really, really making this happen and working very hard. And I think that people are kind of not paying attention to them right now. They're thinking that all of the AI action is happening elsewhere with images and large language models and stuff. But remember, that is really amazing in terms of being able to do you know, content creation, to be able to replace some knowledge workers, to make things more efficient, that kind of stuff. But in terms of transportation and the labor sort of capture that can happen from transportation, that's not really being accounted for by anybody and nobody else is working on it as hard as Tesla is. So you just keep an eye on this space is what I'm saying and be patient. All of us are being a little too optimistic and yeah, okay, so that's our fault for being too optimistic, but you need to pay attention to this space because when it happens, it is going to happen quickly just like it did with images and with large language models and stuff. It's just that the bar is so high that it can't happen until it's very, very, very close to 100% working. But when it does, it's gonna happen like that. So it's gonna be amazing. In the meantime, everybody have a lovely weekend. I'm gonna get back to drinking my AG1 from Athletic Greens because it is delicious and I can't wait and everybody have a great time and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.